What could it be for? How come it has this bulbous nature at the bottom? It's kind of hefty in this neck of the woods like I am. Why is that? What's going to happen at the bottom? to me. Oh, no, you're not hefty in that neck of the woods. Okay, so what you've got basically is down here is where sediment is basically going to sit. So every once in a while it's going to be shaken. Do you ever have to shake your coffee? I don't drink it. Okay. Do any of those who do drink it shake the coffee? No. All right? Okay. How about chocolate? Hot chocolate gets sediment in the bottom, right? Okay. So do lemonade, orange aid, any of the citrus aids. It's a lemonade pot, basically. Lemonade pot, just like that. That's why you have sort of this bulbous nature toward the bottom. It's not a teapot, because remember, it's not short and stout. I'm a little teapot, short and stout, right? So that's not what you have. Your piece has an Asian mark at the bottom of it. That mark indicates that this particular piece was made in Asia, specifically Japan. It's earthenware china. That means it's fired at a low temperature. And it is also, in fact, cobalt blue decoration, hand-painted on a um, orange ground, background. The mark on the bottom indicates that the piece is made prior to 1891 because it is marked not with its country of origin in English, but it is marked with its country of origin using the calligraphic symbolism of the Japanese writing. Value on your piece? Why do I know that? Well, basically, the McKinley Tariff Act is enacted in 1891. Anything that comes into the United States after 1891 has to be marked in English on the bottom. So it would have to say made in Japan. So without any information about markings, that particular piece tells me it has to be made before 1891. It's probably made between 1885 and 1891. It's valued about $150. It's made in Japan. A woman in the back said, I buy the picture. Right? I don't want you to buy things based on your taste. I want you to buy things based on quality and condition. Condition is to antiques, what location is to real estate. It's got to be in good shape. Right? Quality is based on who made it, how it was made, what kind of materials were used to make it, and the mastery of the artisan who made it. How did you acquire this? My grandmother's one piece of set. Seven piece set, including what? Big bowl, big pitcher, chamber pot for when you have to do one or two, soap dish, toothbrush holder. What's this one for? This is the small pitcher. What's it for? Come on. Rinsing. Exactly. Not your mouth. Rinsing. Yes. Four inch pitcher as well. Okay. This particular piece, so do you want a value for the whole set, assuming that all of them have the same mark, okay, and assuming that all of them, in fact, also are in the same condition, and they all have the same applied ornamental transfer wear image, right? All of them have these nice lilacs on it, right? They date to about 1900, value on the whole set, about $795. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't do anything. All the values that I always give are based on a sales record where a similar piece has sold recently. How far is it Pensacola to use? Uh, close to about 600 miles. 600 miles. If you're driving, you're listening to, I don't know, Aretha Franklin or Cheryl Crow or who you're listening to in the in music in the, in the car. I like Lionel Richie. Oh, Lionel Richie. Oh. Oh, what a feeling. Yes. Dancing on the ceiling. Yes. He was good for how many years? Decades and decades and decades. Right? Still is. We love him. Don't we, Brenda? How'd you acquire the Satsuma Japanese Uwer? E W E R. Uwer. E W E R. I got that from Gumfrey's board at an antique shop. Okay, antique shop. What made you buy it? Colorful? Here are some of the. The samurai figures, some of the scholars on it, right? All textural. That's what that Satsuma is, and that's what that Moriage is. Right? Nice. Piece dates to about the turn of the 20th century. These are just decorative pieces. You don't put flowers in them, you don't really pour out of them, they're just decorative. Usually they come in pairs. Yours is quite large, might not have had a mate. Value on this particular piece, anywhere between $100 and $125. Okay. Retail. Less than an auction. 
Right, Calvin? <laughs> all right. I gave you all an information sheet with my picture on it. This information sheet. On the back, it shows you what a chocolate pot looks like. Is this a chocolate pot? Is this the coffee pot? No, it's a chocolate pot. It's not a chocolate pot. Look on the back of the sheet. You have the back of the sheet. I mean, it's like when I used to give my Penn State linebackers the answer. We do a review test the day before the test, which was basically also known as, I'm going to give you the answers today, come to class. And I hand them the sheet with basically the answers on it. They go, oh, we don't know. Look at the sheet. You got to win the Big Ten, guys. You gotta pass our history. <laughs> Trying to help you. Anyway, what is it? Teapot or chocolate pot? Chocolate pot has a hole coming out of its body. Just like the one on the back of that information sheet. There are information sheets in the back if you didn't pick one up when you came in. Where are you? Okay, honey. So how did you acquire this piece of RS Prussia where? Uh, my mother-in-law, uh, she has two of them and another one that it wasn't marked on the bottom, so I brought that one. So you brought the one that was marked? Yeah. Okay. Transfer where, which we talked about. This is all porcelain. RS Prussia. When did we call Germany Prussia? Up until what time? Jean might know, because Jean brought a piece of that relates to World War I. We called Germany Prussia up until World War I. Well, I think it came from her parents who came from Poland. Okay, Poland. This piece is actually German, right? It's easy to get it to Poland, as we all know. And this particular piece is a typical piece that we see over and over and over again. But RS Prussia Ware is a very high quality ceramic. And it's very nice, it's clearly marked. You have the matching lid, which is not broken. The finials are usually broken. That's this top part, the finial. Usually broken. This one is in good shape. Value on this piece, about $125. Nice. Dates to when? I just told you. About 1900. About 1900 to 1918. Beautiful.